Cardiff, May 11th. Mm -hmm. Be there. I expect her to beat Jessica McCasco. I think it'll be a yeah. tough fight in Cardiff. He broke my ribs. <laughs> You're not about that. But that's just like the Poland. Yes. And that is Lawrence Akoli going up to fight Lukasz Rosanski. 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 Like Mac Wazowski. From Monsters Inc. Yeah. <laughs> Where did he get that from? <laughs> Any heavyweights you think that could come down to bridge weight? Dante Wilder. It's what we love. It's, it's, you want, we all want to win. Zach Chelly against Callum Simpson. I love Callum Simpson. Love Callum. You're doing it. Yeah. 50-50. Yeah. Oh, is it 50-50? 50-50. Wow. 50-50. Mouthpiece, the home of unfiltered boxing. Welcome back to Mouthpiece. I am Savage Dan. I'm Miles Ferron. And we are back. Obviously, Chelsea drew. Arsenal won top of the league. Yeah, we lost a last minute goal, last minute to Sheffield United. And it's very typical, but let's get to boxing. Yes. Let's look ahead to May 11th, Cardiff. And let's look behind us um, at, well, yeah, the IBF and the WBC. <laughs> but mainly at um, what happened between Sandy Ryan and Terry Harper. Um, and I look at potentially there, Sandy Ryan beat Terry Harper mm -hmm. and could be a potential opponent for the winner of Lauren Price and Jessica McCaskill, which takes place Cardiff, May 11th. Mm -hmm. Beat it. Um, it. Just got me thinking. What's it got you thinking, Savage Dan? Uh, you know, I... I'm going to try and take my boxer hat off here. <laughs> but even underneath there... Yeah, <laughs> there's another one. All I see is Lauren Price winning every fight she's ever in. Um, she's an Olympic gold medalist twice. Yeah, twice. The most decorated amateur... Of all time. Of all time from Great Britain. Mm -hmm. That's male or female. Mm -hmm. She Great doesn't record. lose often at anything. Yeah, she doesn't. Football, rugby... Martial arts. Everything. She's master. Whatever she yeah. decides to put her mind to, she does it and she wins. You know when they say jack of trade, master of none? She's mastered them all. They don't say jack of trades. Yeah. They say jack of all trades. Yeah. You're jack of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> but a master of none. But she's, she's master a master of all trades. Of all trades. Master of all trades. Yeah. Um, I expect her to beat Jessica McCaskill. I think it'll be a yeah. tough fight in Cardiff. It's going to be a very, yeah, very tough fight for her. But is that a potential opponent after Sandy Ryan? Yeah, of course it is. It's just, Sandy Ryan's a good fighter as well. She just won, like you just said. I think it's a fight that the public wants to see or yeah. the public needs. Well, the problem is, once you win a world title, which I believe Lauren is about to do. Yeah, 100%. Everyone who you wanted to fight and maybe didn't want to fight you, now what? fancies <laughs> a shot at you because it's a world title shot. Of, yeah, course, yeah, of course, there is an added incentive to fighting you. Um, so I expect for everyone who perhaps might have stayed out of Lauren Price's way to get in line. Right. Yeah, to fight. I think, it, I think it's a very good fight. Um, and I think Sandy Ryan's a top, top, top fighter. But mm. I just, I can't see anybody beating, beating Lauren Price at the moment. Mm. I just think that she is, um, I think she knows too much. I think we probably don't make enough of the Olympic schooling because it is definitely a thing. Yeah, of course. Um, and we saw that just a couple of weekends ago with Fraser Clark and Fabio Wardley. Wardley. And I think a lot of people don't take into account how good you have to be to be at the Olympics and mm. to be on a podium squad. And, you know, like, it's just one of those things. So mm. I look at that fight and I think um, that Lauren Price wins in Cardiff. And then I think in she wins fashion. again and again and again. I don't really <laughs> think it matters who's in front of her for the time being. Yeah, as I think stands, she's yeah. that good. The poster girl of boxing to be the face of yeah, women's boxing. Definitely between her and maybe Caroline Dubois. Yeah. Um, those two are the they're, they're, two. they're, the, they're the two. They're when, the two when front you know, Yeah, but Karis is around as well, and yeah. I, I proper like Karis. You know, I think like she's a big character, and she's also because of Lauren maybe gonna go under the radar a little bit, and it might be good for her. Yeah. Um, because she is a like she has a style that is very good for the pro game as well. So mm. interesting. Um, let's look past May 11th to May 24th. Stacked, man. Stacked. Uh, we have a fight in Poland. And yes. That is Lawrence Akoli going up to fight Lukasz Rosanski. For that belt behind you right That's there. It. The WBC, Bridge of Weight. Bridge of Weight world title. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people may have been thinking he would, you know, go and fight Chris Bill and Smith again, but he's opted to go this way. We know it was never easy for him to make Cruiser. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He is massive. He's a big guy. I wonder if we do get that that fight at some point. Mm -hmm. That the... the 
the, the rematch. GBG, the rematch. Do uh, we get it? Billum Smith might come up. You never know. You never know. You, you, you just um, never know. But as uh, it stands right now, it looks like the best opportunity and you know the maybe the best business move and just the best move on paper right now is to go and win a world title at Bridge of Weight. Yeah. But this is not a foregone conclusion. Yeah, because this guy, he just beat <laughs> Babic, right? In the first round. I think he beats everyone in the first round. <laughs> like, like he he's the first is, round guy. He is the, like, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna attempt to end this early. Which I think is gonna play into Lawrence Okoli's hands, to be But it's, it's in Poland. And look, this guy's obviously got bombs in both Burns, hands. Yeah. Um, but when you're talking a fighter that is awkward and hard to fight, you 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 mean Lawrence Akoli. Yeah. Like like how Makalele coined that role, the Makalele role. role. <laughs> that is the Akoli role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will make this fight so hard for you just to even land a shot. Yeah. yeah You'll yeah. have to go through hell just to land a shot because he is so kind of got, got them long levers and he's just so far away from you, especially for someone like Rosansky, but there's still obviously a threat. Yeah. For me, Lawrence Akoli, obviously this he's fighting in Poland, so we'll call it a away game. It's an away day for him. Yeah. He just needs to just do the business and just get the belt and come back home. Just, you don't even, he, we want to see it in a great fashion. We'd love to see him knock him out and take the belts. And yeah, but if he needs to just box behind his jab, because obviously, the, um, what's the Polish guy's name again? Rosanski. 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 Like Mac Wazowski. From Monsters Inc. Yeah. <laughs> Where did he get that from? <laughs> yeah, he's a smaller fighter. Just box behind your jab and just obviously keep him at bay. Like you said, he's going to have to go through hell through level to just land a shot on Lawrence yeah. because he's a very awkward fighter as it is. Just do what you have to do. Like obviously, he's got a new he's got a new trainer now. Joe Gallagher. Joe Gallagher. Good trainer, great trainer. Um, And even if he was not that and I didn't think he was the best trainer, I would say that. <laughs> because if I didn't, there would be issues. Are you scared issues. of him, Dan? No, I'm not scared of him. That guy just means business all the time. All the time. All the time. But I think it's a great move for him, you know, just because... Look, Dubai is a place I visit quite a lot. It doesn't scream. It to me, it doesn't scream trenches. No, it's not a trench. But you could you could train there, though. Of course, you can train there. But then afterwards, you're gonna go to a beach club and have watermelons. And it just I, I don't know. It doesn't feel like gritty, like moss side, Wivenshaw. Like it's grey even in summer. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, like I'm talking. You know, like you come out the mud. From you know, not none of this is like you walk out the gym and like you're in like a, a beach club or you're, you're in a paradise. Like yeah, you're, yeah. you're in like you see a Lamborghini no, truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. None of that. <laughs> not for this fight. Not for not for a Poland away day. Yeah, okay, cool. You need trenches, ten weeks or twelve weeks, whatever it is of trench time. Yeah, yeah. And I think um I think the moves is actually very good for him. I feel like going to Dubai, um obviously I don't know a Koli situation like that, but for me, it seems quite comfortable, mm. um, and everything's nice and sweet, and it's the, but the maybe, life of Zach and Cody. Yeah, but <laughs> good show, dude. great yeah, show, very, dude. very good show. Maybe he needed that though after coming off the loss of the CBS fight, and he just wanted to clear his mind. Like you said, um, Dubai is paradise. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of an escapism. Maybe you need that just to get away from the noise from the British media and etc. Has he still got it? Does he still want to become a world champion? So maybe Dubai was the right place for him to go. Yeah. And like you said, now that he's going back into the trenches. He needs to go to Manchester yeah. with him, sure. I, right. I think it's, I think it's a good, um, a really good kind of uh, co partnership there, or whatever it is that that he's gonna have with um with Joe Gallagher, because I think Joe is quite an aggressive coach when it comes to like what he wants his fighters to do. Yeah. He wants them to be quite aggressive and exert exert themselves and and kind of like you know impose the themselves foot, yeah, on a fight, be on, fight, be on the front foot. foot Throw big hard shots, blah blah blah. Which is which is different to Shane. Yeah, but Shane's super calculated. So for yeah, me, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Is that was the three that would be in contention for 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 coach of the, of the year, year trainer of the year yeah. is Ben Davison, uh, Joe Gallagher, and, and Shane McGuigan. Shane McGuigan. Like, yeah. That's 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 the three for me here. Um, there are obviously loads of others, but those three, I feel like they are able to train different types of fighters, different types of way, keep your keep your attributes. So I think it's a good move. Do you think we're going to see a completely different type of fighter in Lawrence Okoli, or I do you think he just fine tune? Or just... I think he did very little wrong. And I uh, look, a lot of people aren't a big fan of his um his style. style because mm. it's it's not it's not exactly like fan friendly, mm. but it is so effective, effective. Mm. and 
you know, he, he's never even looked close to losing a fight before he fought Chris Billum Smith. Mm. And that took 15,000 fans as well. And obviously, they've done a lot of sparring beforehand. They know, it, if anything, CBS had a real big head start on every other opponent that Lawrence O'Coley has mm. ever faced. Mm, mm. Um, and and a judge still uh, had, had that a draw. draw yeah. yeah. So I just think Lawrence O'Coley's style shouldn't really be changed. I think you've got to get the best out of him. Um, but I think ultimately he knows what he's doing in there yeah, yeah, because he's just a top fighter. Yeah, top fighter. Um, so I expect him to, to to go to Poland, collect the belt, and yeah. whether it's a pit stop to heavyweight because we know he has aspirations to go to heavyweight or whether it's to sit around and see who comes up, we, want, we will see. Any heavyweights you think that could come down to bridge weight? Dante Wilder? I don't know. Mm. It all depends on... It all depends on how much respect the bridge weight division gains over maybe the next 12 months yeah it's a new weight but I think if someone like Lawrence Cody gets this belt this WBC hopefully yeah. which he, we, we're rooting for him to get and he starts calling out fighters not necessarily say come and fight me but he's just you know yeah. make it make that make the, well, like I said, make the division Price, a bit more interesting maybe you you offer no nothing to anybody um when you don't have a belt but as soon as you have, have a, a belt, WBC yeah. bridge weight world title Somewhere. All the people that maybe would be like, mm, nah, well, might just be like, do you know what? Might go up there. It's a world title. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. Um, another good fight that is not quite there yet, but we know it's on the horizon. We know it's coming soon. They've been on a collision course. It's Zach Chelly against Callum Simpson. I love Callum Simpson, man. You're doing it. Yeah, yeah. bro, I'm telling you, man. He's, 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 game the f he's game the fan, man. I'm a big fan of Zach Chelly as well. I like them both. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm looking at that fight and... When Zach Chelly's in a fight, it's always, we, we talk awkward fighters. Mm. We're talking Lawrence O'Coley. You throw Zach Chelly right in the mix. mix there as well. He is as awkward as they come to fight. <laughs> he, is, he is a disaster, <laughs> he man. Is. He is actually the most, he's probably the most disruptive fighter I've ever seen, apart from Lawrence O'Coley, in terms of ruining what you want to do. Mm. Like, I'm going to just ruin it. David... Do you think that's do you think that's an art, or do you think there's something? Yeah. Do you think that's something within you as a boxer, or do you think that's yeah, something well, that you when learn? I, when I look at the, the Anthony Simpson fight, I think it was, and Zach Chelly just kind of just came with a game plan. I'm not sure if he came with a game plan, but he just he just ripped up the script. You're not going to do any of that beautiful pure boxing, boxing with stuff. me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna you know just bat down on my gum shield and just do a proper spit and sawdust job on you, <laughs> and that's it. And that's what it was. And he just said, yeah, none of that. We're not doing that. Fight we're we're doing this today. But I, and when he's in that mood, he's a nightmare for anyone, even a Callum Simpson. See, see, there's where I kind of disagree with you because I think Callum Simpson has enough skill and has enough boxing IQ to make him Zach Shelley fight to his chin. And he's also big. He's big. Yeah. He's a, he's a- It's an interesting fight. It's, yeah, it's, it's a proper, fight. It's a proper good fight. Did you know that that fight is actually on our poll 50-50? Um, oh, is it 50-50? 50-50. Wow. 50-50. It's not as clear cut as people think because every time the chips are down against Zach Shelley- He finds he a way. He finds something. Yeah, he finds something. Just when you think, like, oh, like yeah, that's it. Yeah, he I finds mean, something. Uh, with all due respect, um, Mark Jeffers looked actually quite good against him, mm -hmm. but that's another tough boy from the Gallagher gym. Mm -hmm. They're just tough as nails over durable, there. Yeah, very durable. Um, so yeah, it's a fight we want to see. Good fight, man. Very good fight. Let's let's go up a couple of divisions, and let's look at the cruiserweight scene. We obviously have very a triple threat match. We just saw WrestleMania. I haven't watched it yet. I'm I haven't sure watched it, but it's, it's it's around. It's I've heard it's one of the best WrestleMania's ever. Ever. I need to go back um, and watch it, man. So let's talk triple threat matches. We've had some good Isaac triple Chamberlain, Vidal Riley, Chef, Chef Clark, Clark all seem to be hovering around each other. Now we know Vidal Riley is out for a little bit with a rib injury caused by Mikel Lawal. Yeah, he messaged me. He said he cracked. That's a good fight. He said, boy, first round he cracked my rib, bro. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? He said, he broke it. <laughs> he broke my ribs <laughs> in the first round and he's still winning. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, man. Tough stuff, man. Tough stuff, man. Um, well done. Great fight. Great Now, great it fight, looks Riddle. as though because maybe Vidal's going to be out for a couple of months. Yeah, it takes a year. And with ribs, obviously with rib injuries, they can't leave. They can't go in there. Yeah. So you just have to just leave it. That's it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's out. So what happens now? Isaac Chamberlain has the British title. Chev Clark is the mandatory for the British title. He wants it. And he wants it. And he they doesn't all, care who it's it is. It's time for them to all fight. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, this is business end. I understand that a lot was made of the the little ruckus that was ringside. Eddie Hearn even said that you know as soon as Chef Clark got involved, Sky cut the Sky cameras. Sky cut the cameras. And all that. But it wasn't um, that. It was, Sky always cut the cameras when it gets a little bit too yeah, hairy. But it, it wasn't that. It was yeah. get, it was looking a bit hairy. Anyway, but let's let's talk about yeah. it. Um, if you are Isaac Chamberlain, because in this in this particular moment, this little one here. Isaac probably is in the driving seat in terms of his decision is the primary one mm. that makes everyone else's decision. So who do you fight? Do you stick around and fight Vidal Riley, which means you have to relinquish your British title? Yes, that's what I say. Or do you yeah. fight Chef Clark whilst Vidal Riley is out with this injury? It, it, well, he should fight Chef Clark. He Definitely. should, I think so. 100% well. you should fight Chef Clark. You don't want to relinquish your title because obviously he fought so hard to get it yep. off, off a while. Um, you're here now. You're a world champion. Like you said, when you're a world champion, everyone wants to call you out. You don't want to relinquish it and wait for um, Vidal Riley. If Vidal's not going to be ready in yeah, time. Yeah, he's not going to be ready yeah. in time. Obviously, Vidal's going to want There's rest. a lot of attention on the Vidal Riley fight and Isaac Chamberlain. But then it leaves Chef Clark out in the cold as well. And yeah. He's not mandatory for no reason. Like He's there to fight yeah, for the British fight. title. But if Chamberlain believes that he's the best and he said that he can beat both They all believe them, they're the best, That's bro. the thing. That's the they thing. They all believe they're the best. So Chef have... Clark will say, I'll beat these two no issues. Isaac Chamberlain, we know what he's saying. Yeah. You lot can't chat to me. That's what he's saying. Yeah, you're and not about Vidal, it, bro. Vidal is saying <laughs> you're not about that. Vidal's like. just like this is this is fine. It doesn't matter which he, Vidal's the English champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he is like, in terms of rankings, the lowest of the three. Yeah. But he has a lot of clout at the moment. Yeah. And obviously Respectful. coming off a good win, um, and there's a maybe there's there's more noise around him than perhaps anyone else at the moment. So, can I ask you a question then? What? Because Chamberlain was meant to fight. You went to go fight for the European, right? Yeah. So is that another? Is that still another option? It's still an option, but the problem is, Isaac has all these options. Yeah, that you know that that presents the, the C slack fight probably represents the biggest risk and the European title. Mm -hmm. Um, but maybe not the commercial value that yeah, 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 these yeah, fights yeah, yeah, yeah. for. The yeah. British fans want this, and like, let's be honest, there's a lot happening worldwide, but we are just trying to concentrate on well, giving the British fight. fans the best fights possible. So this is, for Ch so for Chamberlain, this will probably be the best fight for him then. Either be one of those he, two. Either one of those. So you, you, fight, you fight Chef Clark. I don't think it matters for Vidal. I think Vidal is saying- Yeah, he, he will chill. Vidal is saying, it doesn't matter. If you two fight, I'll fight the winner. Winner, basically, yeah. So Chamberlain, Chef Clark, basically, he, he if he beats him- and, and then and then Vidal fights the winner. And then, if he, and then whoever, them, the winner of them two, it's a triple threat match. Go over to it's a triple threat match. We do a round robin if you have to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can defend against whoever lost the one before. I I think it just needs to happen. And whilst there's eyes on it and there's attention on it and a little bit of noise and maybe a little bit of controversy and like I said a couple of weeks it. ago when we was talking on the show, even domestically in British boxing, what I'd love to see, and I'm loving that that is happening now, is everybody wants to be the number one in their country. You yeah. need we need we need a I'm no British. he's yeah in British. Yeah. He is the best cruiserweight British um, yeah. champion. He's the best yeah. light heavy. Yeah, of domestically. Yeah, domestically. So you have to, yeah, you have yeah, to. So I feel like you need to go through this first. British titles always do that. You have and, to. And, and we saw it with Fraser Clark and, and with Fabio Wardley. They always bring out something special. Yeah. That's just what they do. It's what we love. It's, it's, you want, we all want to win the Premier League yes. first. And then yeah, you yeah, go yeah. And then you go win the Champions, Champions League, League if you can. If you can. Um, speaking of Fraser and Fabio, I'm no closer. I'm not sure about you, but I'm no closer to negotiating a <laughs> rematch with them. Um, it is the most obvious rematch, in yeah, my opinion, to be, ever to easy. make. Everyone is was was happy with what they saw. Great spectacle. Um, and I think we'd see something very similar in the rematch. But I do have to ask this question: Who do you think rematches favour in general, boxers or fighters? I would say boxers. Boxers. Definitely boxers. I think they have more to more to adjust to their to their game. Yeah. They can they can they, they can assess it more better. I think Yeah, I'd say the but I say Clark has got more I wasn't even specifically talking about that fight. I, I'm I, just that, talking rematches in general. Every time I see one, um the person with maybe the better boxing ability or IQ seems to be the fighter that does better in the rematch. Mm. Now, whether that is a Andre Ward in his rematch with Kovalev, whether it is a- Joshua Ruiz. Yes. Mm. Um, or a Mayweather Madonna. Mm. The boxer 
seems to figure something out just a little bit that yeah, makes yeah, their yeah. night easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was obviously a great fight, uh, Fabio Wardley and, and Fraser Clark, but there were probably too many high action moments in there for Fraser, Fraser. Clark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, so, which, we, which we feared. Which yes. we did fear for the yeah. for the. For I the didn't boxer. think there'd be that much in there. Yeah, there was two. I, I, there was I, a I lot. mean, the whole fight was action packed, and if you're Fraser Clark, you probably are going into a rematch thinking, "I can make that easier." Yeah, yeah. And I, I could have made it easier. Mm. And having said that, Fre uh, Fabio would be thinking, "Ah, oh, if my nose doesn't go, I can I can get him out of there." Yeah. It's, so uh, we need that rematch. We, we need a rematch. Need rematch. Um, what, but I do feel like rematches favor boxers over brawlers and fighters and yeah, this is the, the more, more cerebral with. fighter yeah. seems to figure something out just a little bit quicker yeah when 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 do you think we could get that by june july no chance why? no chance why if you had a crack on your nose do you want to fight in it 10 that. weeks time you got to do a camp and everything i i i think it would be <laughs> <laughs> september oh, so uh, september onwards probably august it's the month off yeah. what we all having a month off yeah. In, in August, yeah. that's what that's what boxing usually does. Yeah, carnival, carnival. That's month. it. We, yeah. ha we we have that. We have like a month be somewhere between December and January off, mm. and usually we get a bit of August off. And then, Saudi have something to say about it. Yeah, well, yeah. And um, right, September then, so yeah, we're looking forward to that. If, it. if it does happen again, boys, it should definitely happen again, man. Right, let's get on to a, a quick debate. Um, obviously, everyone would have seen the the Mike Tyson one, and. Every, a lot of people. You did a serious pivot on that, then. Or, uh, <laughs> you did a serious listen, pivot. Listen, it is just one of those. Was it pressure? Things. Did it you was, really? Look, there was a couple of. Did couple you look of at messages. tapes? Yeah. I've, I've had to go back and look at things. Yeah, rightfully so. I want Mike Tyson in there, so I'm going to do whatever I can to put it's him not in like there. Like you want him, he's in I there. Want him in Dan, there. Man. No, I put him in there after having a, a close look. I put him in there. Mm. But my point is to say this: a lot of people only remember Tyson's prime. And that is why they have him so high in their all-time list of Ooh. everything. So let's talk primes. Okay. Who for you... I did a list. You did a list. Of course you did a list. Mm. I did a list as well. I would like to hear your top five fighters in their prime. Ever. Okay. All weights, all time. And it's, it's, it's your list. I'm going to try my hardest not to criticise anything that's on that list. But... Yeah, it's, it's 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 your list. It's your favorite fighters in their prime. Okay, shall I go first? Yep. Go. Give me all five. All five. You want yeah. all five? You don't want one by one. And like a sentence as to why. Okay. Roy Jones Jr. No words. Yeah. What a prime. That what? is what you call a prime. God. That's what you call a prime. Any guy that's knocking people out with their hands behind their back. Yeah. 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 It's what like a that's, prime that's he seemed just legendary. unbeatable forget it yeah, that, that version of him uh, uh, the thing about boxing is if you box too far past your prime people forget your prime prime yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but if you go back and you see that little speck in time you're like whoa what this is why that? we this is why we loved him yeah, yeah this, this is why we loved 100% him 100% agree you want to give me your one of yours or should I just go keep going yeah I'm going to give you one then okay go on Gennady Golovkin triple G um, that man was <sighs> in his God. prime I, I look, boxing is one of those sports where we really appreciate the past, more so than any other sport. Mm. Football, we accept that we are getting better, uh, whether it's the science, the technique, yeah, everything. Every sport, yeah. we're getting better and we're getting the 1%. Boxing is the one sport where I believe we we always say the past is better than the present. Mm. That era was the best the era ever. Yeah, the yeah, golden yeah. era. They were tough for 15, ounce, uh, 15 rounds, smaller gloves, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that yeah. was the best ever. Um, I call Gennady Golovkin a throwback boxer and any era boxing. Any I, era. I, I think he survives any, any era, era of middleweight fighters. That's tough. I think he is. So in he, his, he, I think his prime was so scary. The way he dispatched of everyone, how heavy his hands was, um, yeah, his, his ability to kind of put pressure on you with his feet. He could punch from anywhere. Mm. Body shots would take you out. Head shots, you, you felt like he was getting hit by a truck. <laughs> like everyone you know like people would hit the floor like wow like, what was this yeah he was yeah he was hitting way too heavy for him anyway. that prime or all i'm saying is don't let um him pass this prime when and i'm talking him with canelo him with, with uh devra yeah. what's his name uh um don't let it deter from what he was his prime, his prime. yeah yeah, yeah. He when he was coming up you you didn't have to watch the fight it was a stoppage mm. 
<laughs> he was that. Catch good. it on the news. There you go. <laughs> Another one. Um, all right, this one is a personal one for me. In his prime, I'm gonna say Errol Spence Jr. Now, I know you might be thinking, mm, there's not really a prime there. Nah. Yeah, but for me, mm. I think he's one of the best water weights of all time for me. Really? Yeah, personally. Because he set out, like, he's, like we said, Olympian. Yeah. The Olympian pedigree, everybody says, oh, you know, they're, they're on a pedestal, but yeah. this is the guy that lived up to all expectations. Yeah, he did. He's, he set out on a, a good, mission. A good prime, but I can't tell you what his prime was. Where, I think like, his prime, where, where, where? I think it was his prime. Anything after when he beat when he beat Kell Brook for this belt behind me, this beautiful red belt behind me. Right, so how, wh how long is that prime? Where, that, where are we calling it? I can't remember it? the years. That was probably like 2016, 17. 16, 17. I think that's still Yeah, because cool. he was in the Olympics yeah. 2012. And then after yeah. he, a couple of years yeah, later. Yeah, no, he looked, he looked very, 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 very good. Very good. Very, good. very good. I'm not sure if I would have him. Anyway, this is your But list. I just love his, pri I I love know, his prime. I know, you love him. He's a favorite. I, he's one of that's my favorite boxers. Yeah, yeah. Right. I love his prime. He beat Kell Brook for that um, beautiful belt behind me. Yeah. Beat Sean Porter for the one behind you. Yeah. And he was in his prime, Sean Porter, at that time. Yes. Yeah. He beat um, Ugas for the yes. WBO. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember if it was BO or BA. Either one. I think it's BO. Don't kill yeah. me. But either one, one of those black belts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he was just collecting straps. Yeah. And in that whole time, he was- he strap was season. Yeah. Strap season. He was, he was the main guy right. in the welterweight division. And just another quick shout out. While he was doing it, there was at least 10 welterweight champions at that time. Garcia's, Mikey Garcia, Crawford, obviously he went to go fight. Yeah, he didn't fight a lot of them though. He fought one of them. He fought loads of- He, fought, he, he didn't he, fight, uh, he didn't fight Garcia. He did. Eventually. Danny, Danny Garcia. Talking, bro, he fought him Ma way after. Danny Garcia. You fought him way after the fight. Yeah, yeah. After the after the crash, oh, yeah, he fought yeah, Danny yeah, Garcia. Yeah, yeah. And Danny so Garcia is a. Are we, are we saying he's a pre, champion? Pre crash is a prime. Yeah, pre crash is okay, a prime. Pre crash okay, is a prime. And, and I'll take it. He was as a prime. I'm going to give you a real personal one. Uh, let me give you a real world awake uh, prime. Go on, Manny Pacquiao. Oh, God. That guy was scary. Now that and, and for me, I haven't got Mayweather in this because I think he's a cheat code in this in this whole prime thing. He can't. I'm not giving him a prime. Yeah. I feel like you've got him in there. Yeah, 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 you do, but I can't accept Mayweather as a prime because what are we talking about? A seventeen-year prime? We don't even know. He's just the best. Well, prime is Whatever. prime, though. But <laughs> I'm talking about Pacquiao between 2006 to 2009, maybe 2007 to 2009, where he was just ferocious. Oh man, yeah. we're talking Hatton, uh, Cotto, Margarito. Uh, he 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 was beating them all, oh, yeah. and, and the, even the ones he didn't stop. It was only because early doors, the fighters, and we're talking good fighters, Shane Moses and that, just, yeah. just deciding, I just want to make it to the 36th minute. Yeah, yeah. To the 12th I just want to make it. I think his his prime was so frightening he was that I, I didn't want him to, I didn't want him to fight Mayweather because I was scared for Mayweather and Mayweather <laughs> was my, my favorite That was fighter. meant to be and I was just like, like, he was, he was, yeah, yeah he, he was, was yeah, he was yeah petrifying. Through. He was hitting hard at that time, you know. Super hard. He was hitting very too hard. hard. Some people, yeah, say. people say, yeah, why is he what's in this division? Yeah, yeah, what's going on Facts. here? Um, I'm gonna go for your favorite boxer of all time, not Mayweather. I am Mike Tyson. Yeah, he's a man as well. Yeah. <laughs> now, when we top primes, prime. There we go. Of course, he's gonna be maybe top of a all-time prime list. All his time. prime was, and a lot of people say we missed his prime, but I'm just gonna go off what we did see I don't in think that we really, prime. Uh, yeah, nah, a lot of people say you know if he didn't go to prison we would have seen that patch there we would have seen yeah devastation I saw enough to oh, suggest yeah, yeah, that enough. when he was in his bag you couldn't beat yeah him. you couldn't beat Mike Tyson you um, could have beat I might you could have beat I might but were, obviously this is the thing about these debates is that they can be debated yeah some people will say you know as soon as you made it past a certain point with Mike Tyson mm. and you managed to impose a bit of a threat Maybe you could have beaten. Don't, don't do I'm this. Not, I'm not going to do that. Don't do this again. I'm Sarah's not going to do this in the prime. Yeah, combo. yeah please. In please. his prime, he was unbearable, and I hear it. Yes. Yeah, he was. He was. He was. He was the goat. He's the face of boxing. Um, my last one is Roberto Duran. Okay. Now that's a prime fighter. Um, somebody who just looked devastating. Hands of stone. When your name is Hands of Stone, <laughs> forget it. I ain't fighting. <laughs> nah. What's his nickname? Hands of Stone. Brick Hands. Nah, I don't want to fight him. Yeah, forget it. Um, I, I just him. think that I just think primes are such a special thing because a lot of times when you're in your prime, you might not realize you're in your prime. Yeah, yeah. Some people do. I feel like Canelo knew when he was in his prime because he started fighting every three weeks. <laughs> um, like, and that's the thing. Like primes are like 
you feel unbeatable. Yeah. You look unbeatable. And you you just look devastating in those in those times. I just think that just one of those things, man. Just yeah, I man. just I would like to do a list though of fighters past their who the best fighters past their prime. Wow. So like uh David Hay. David Hay. No. Nah. No, not like past. Well, like, as in, what do you do past his prime? Yeah, yeah. Bernard Hopkins, B Hop. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm yeah. like the ones who like hit the top of the hill. You should have. If you if you want to be a romantic, you retire there, but you, but don't. you don't. But like, how long can you kind of <laughs> stay up there? Live long enough yeah. to see yourself become the villain. There you go. Basically. There you go. So B Hop is the perfect example. Of that. I've got one more, but I couldn't really think of a fifth. So I had some honorable mentions. I had Ricky Hatton. Yeah. Uh, Prince Nazim. Yeah. And Buster Douglas. What a prime. <laughs> We're talking a one fight prime there for Ooh, Buster. He had a prime <laughs> yeah, yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, he had yeah. a moment that is going to be here forever. Moment. That's a yeah. big moment. Has he, uh, Hassan uh, Ratman as well. Yeah. <laughs> if we're talking one fight primes, primes. <laughs> I hear it. All right, we could do a list on that. Let's you know. do Nanito Denaire. Oh, let's do a most impressive upsets. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Let's do an upset. Yeah, let's one. do up someone. Upsets That's is a big upset one. Upset mix. Upset mix. Um, um, right, I'm up upset because it's the end of the episode. I didn't pick a fifth. Okay, yeah, you did. I did. I we just did. No, nah, oh, is that honorable none of those are... uh, If anything, out of those three, I would probably pick uh, Ricky Hatton. Ricky Hatton had very it. good. Two thousand five to two thousand seven. Yeah, yeah, just before yeah, he was, he, yeah, he, yeah. He was cleaning up. Yeah, it was so it was so easy for him. He had to go up yeah. and yeah, find yeah, yeah, challenges. Yeah, yeah. but that yeah, right. prime there, no one was touching Ricky worldwide. Yeah, don't matter. Hundred percent. Costa Zou, big fight. He was Manchester's finest man. Right, guys, that is the end of our episode. Let us know uh, what do you think of Lawrence Okoli moving to the Gallagher gym. Is he now in the trenches? Is that going to be enough for him to get victory in Poland? Lauren Price against Jessica McCaskill. That's coming up. Make sure you get tickets to it. Uh, who do you think wins that? What should they do next? Zach Chelly. Is he the most awkward fighter to fight in the world? Does Callum Simpson make it past him? Who has the best prime? Who have we missed out? Who are we not thinking of here? Who are we not thinking of? Who has had the best prime in boxing that we have not mentioned? Joe Kazagi. Too long of a prime. I'm not counting those kind of fighters that <laughs> re retire undefeated. And I, it's a whole prime. The whole yeah. thing is a prime. Um, rematches. Who 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 is better at them? The boxer or the brawler? Let me know. Let him know. Say bye, Miles. Get my Roy Jones on. Yeah, we'll see you next week.